Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Bonbosher, and today I want to show you how to make a custom CV gating effect using the alligator filter gate in Reason. The track that you just heard was something I made for this tutorial real quick, but I want to show how versatile the alligator is and just some simple routing techniques that can really uh, give you some new ideas about how to make some cool sounds. So uh, let's get started. I do have a new project already opened. And I did copy and paste the notes from the previous project over to here, but it's literally just E2, uh, sustained for four bars, 100 velocity, very, 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 very standard. In my new projects rack, I do have a new combinator already created, so just right click and create a combinator. I'm going to recreate the synth that you heard in the tutorial as well, um, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time with it we're going to go through it really quick and um, so we're just going to get right into it right click in the combinator and let's create a Thor and again it's not so much about you know this patch in particular it's more about like what you can do with any patch that you want you can use anything for this type of technique so click to show the programmer and make sure to right click on the Thor and reset the device and I'm just going to go straight off to the low pass filter section real quick. I'm going to just kind of turn down the filter frequency to about 1.15 kilohertz. You can always hold shift and click and drag if you'd like to. But I'm just, I'm just saying right now that these numbers are very arbitrary. Um, definitely use any synth that you want. And um, set the resonance to about 40. The filter envelope amount will be at around uh, 106. There we go. Uh, velocity, you can keep it 47. Basically, of course, it's just the velocity is how hard you hit the keys, um, how much the filter envelope will be affected. So um, next, we're going to go to the first analog oscillator here, and we're going to change it to a FM pair. We're going to change the mod to 14. So uh, essentially, 100 hertz being modulated by 1400 hertz. Um, creates a sum and difference of sidebands and the amplitude dictated here by the FM amount shows those sidebands uh, but I'm just gonna turn it up a little bit maybe to about 48 just so it gets a little more of uh, those higher frequency bands in the in the sound um, I'm also going to set the octave to 2 so let's just take a quick listen to what we have Nothing crazy, pretty standard, uh, just high-pitched drone sound. Uh, frequency modulation can be a little lower if you like, maybe at 36, but again, completely up to you. Next, we're going to go to the second oscillator here. We're going to set it to a wavetable, octave 2. Position is going to be at around 86. And then I'm going to keep it at basic analog. I'm going to click the sync here so that the base frequency of the master oscillator here dictates the base frequency of the wavetable oscillator so they stay in sync. But again, it's completely up to you. I'm also going to activate the shaper here, which is a nice little distortion. We're going to set it to hard clip. And I'm going to set the drive to about 94. Now before I play this out, we just got to make sure to click the second box here to actually enable the second oscillator to the first filter. So let's take a listen real quick. That's a little more interesting harmonics in it. Um, I'm going to go to the amp envelope real quick and just increase the decay and sustain as well as the attack so it doesn't click at the beginning or the end. So I'll increase the amp envelope release. So um, in the tutorial patch, I did add um, some scream. So just right click onto the Thor and add some distortion. I set mine to tape uh, about damage at around 40. Um, I do like lowering the speed of the tape because then it kind of shaves off the higher frequencies. It's, it's really nice. Um, compression, I turned down maybe to about 14. And again, this is random. So just worry about more about what we're going to do with the alligator next. So I'm um, going to get some reverb on it real quick. I'm literally just going to turn it down to about 34 and not do anything else with it. So um, just, you know, really, really, really simple stuff here. So let's take a listen before we get started with the alligator. Just 
Just a little more grit, a little more reverb. It goes a long way. All right, now for the fun part. Now that we've got that all out of the way, I'm going to go in my combinator. I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to right click and I'm going to create an instance of the alligator filter gate. Holding shift means that you are not going to automatically route it as an insert effect or a bus effect. It's just going to be by itself. So press tab to flip the rack. And what we're going to do is we're going to start routing these gate outputs here, CV outputs, controlled voltage, to these modulation input um, ports here in the Thor. So in the sound that you heard, this is what I did. I took the CV gate 1 and I routed it to CV input 1 here. The CV gate 2 of the alligator was to CV2 of Thor. And the gate 3 went to the filter frequency of the modulation input. So we'll be using a gate on the filter to open it up and close it at different times. As you can see here, the zero pattern is on and it's just triggering all kinds of fast it's basically every single one all the time every time but what we're going to do is we're going to set this pattern to 27 i highly recommend to you you know definitely experiment with any pattern that you like but 27 is a good one for this particular tutorial if we played it out the only thing that you would hear being modulated by the alligator would be the filter frequency because we need to use the mod matrix here but let's take a listen to see if it does anything else So you can hear the gate here controlling the filter frequency at certain times when it gets triggered. So it's just a nice way to give it some new life, um, some randomness. But um, let's take it a step further here and let's go in the mod matrix. Let's go to the first source here, go to CV input 1, set the amount to 100 and its destination will be oscillator 1's frequency modulation amount. So what it's going to do is this is going to start triggering this knob here, increasing it or decreasing it when it gets triggered. Next I'm going to set the CV2 input. So just go to the second source here. And I'm going to set it to about 79. Very random. Um, so there's really no wrong or right answers when it comes to this. Oscillator 1's pitch will be the destination. Now, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do more or less the same exact thing for CV1 and 2 for the second oscillators. So I'll just do CV1 in, CV1 2. I'll set this one a little lower just to give it a little more variety. Um, I'm going to set the position or the destination to oscillator 2's position. So it will start triggering the position of this knob here in the wavetable. CV input 2 will go to around, actually we're going to make this one negative, to about negative 31. And what we're going to do to this one is we're going to set the destination to oscillator 2's pitch. So it just has some different pitches flying out when the triggers happen. Um, so this is what we have to hear now. And as you can hear, there is a lot more activity happening. I uh, messed with the resolution here and made it faster or slower, and you could hear that. So um, you can create some incredible textures with this. Um, you can do all kinds of things with this. Um, you can route it anywhere. You can route any of these gates to P1, P2 of a scream. Um, anything. The world is your oyster on this one. So this tutorial today wasn't so much about how to make a sound, but it was more about, you know, a, a technique to kind of get some new creative juices flowing and uh, really utilizing what the alligator can do outside of its bandpass filtering capabilities and everything like that.
Um, so that's it. Um, thank you so much for watching. And um, yeah, I really hope this technique helps you guys, you know, break some creative blocks or just, you know, make something new. Um, I, I love hearing what you guys uh, make. So please keep sending me things you make in Reason or Ableton or whatever. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, we'll see you next time.